Welcome to the latest episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we're going to be talking about the 1971 action thriller, Dirty Harry, starring Clint Eastwood. Um, usually what we like to do, um, we're called the B-Movie Club, so usually what we like to do is pick kind of B-type movies. Um, but what I found is I kind of am drawn to movies that were huge hits 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Uh, things that, like Dirty Harry, that people aren't really talking about as much anymore. Maybe they've forgotten. Um, that aren't on the tip of their minds when they think of, you know, big blockbusters. Now granted, um, I'm still not going to be picking dramas and, you know, sad, depressing things. Um, anything too disturbing to discuss. A um, couple movies I was kind of grappling with, um, both from the 80s. Um, the first one was Karate Kid. Should I do Karate Kid? I'm talking about the original now, not the one with Will Smith as Will Smith's uh, kid. I'm talking about the original Karate Kid um, with Pat Morita and Ralph Macchio. Is it a comedy? I think there's some funny parts in it. Is, there an, is it an action film? I mean, I guess there's the scenes where they're fighting at the tournament. I don't know. I enjoy Karate Kid, and I think it would be a blast to talk about. However, it doesn't really fit into one of my categories. I mean, if I had to pick one, it's probably a drama between uh, a poor social outcast and his sensei, I guess? I don't know. So if this is a movie that you're interested in me doing on the B-Movie Club, send me a line, post it on Twitter, Facebook, on my YouTube page. Just say, hey, Karate Kid, I'm down. Big thumbs up. Um, the other one was Teen Wolf, which is another one that kind of doesn't fit neatly into a char you know, into one of these categories. Um, is it a comedy? It's funny. I mean, is it a horror movie? I don't know. There are werewolves in it. It's hard to define. So if Team Wolf is one that you'd like me to do, please let me know and I'll add it to my queue. So, see, things don't always fit neatly into these categories, so I'm trying to decide uh, how I should handle it. Because, I mean, I don't want to just do, you know, nostalgic movies. I want them to, um, typically I want them to be fun. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be like, oh, it's so sad that Daniel LaRusso doesn't have any friends and he's picked on by bullies at school. You know what I'm saying here? Or <laughs> Michael J. Fox and Teen Wolf is going through some changes and he's having a hard time with it. Anyway, let me know what you think and I'll, I may discuss it on the show. Um, this week, Dirty Harry, 1971. Dirty Harry's the toughest cop in the San Francisco Police Department. And he's on the case when a serial killer is on the loose in the city named Scorpio. He um, is kidnapping people. He's shooting people from the top of high buildings. And he's trying to hold the city for ransom. The problem is, is that Dirty Harry's methods don't always go over well with the, uh, the top brass in the police department. He's kind of a loose cannon. Um, he doesn't always play by their rules. So... One thing leads to another, and I don't want to give it away, but he gets the bad guy. <laughs> this was the first Dirty Harry movie. They went on to spawn like five sequels, um, all starring Clint Eastwood. Um, originally, they offered this role to Frank Sinatra, and he was all set to do it, but he had suffered a wrist injury while filming the Manchurian Canada a few years earlier. So the idea of holding the huge 44 Magnum, I guess it hurt his wrist. It was uncomfortable for him, so he said, eh. He wasn't feeling the script anyway, so he just bailed. Um, then they offered it to John Wayne, who was like, I don't want Frank Sinatra's handoffs or cast-offs, and, you know, and I don't really like the script that much. And they offered it to Robert Meacham. He said, you know what, this movie isn't good for society, basically. He thought it was just... It's too much of a downer, so he bailed. Eventually, the script came to uh, Clint Eastwood, and he snapped it right up. Um, some complaints that these guys had is they felt it was too much like this kind of uh, not-so-hidden right-wing agenda, because throughout the entire movie, 
Dirty Harry is struggling to stay within the rules that a police officer has to stay in and how they're more concerned with the criminal's rights than the victim's rights. Um, at one point, he, <laughs> he, uh, he basically beats a confession out of the bad guy and uh, finds the missing girl where she was hidden and kidnapped. Um, but he didn't read the guy his rights, you know, the unlawful search and seizure, you know, he didn't have a warrant, all those little things. <laughs> uh, it was a problem. It was a big problem. Uh, but at the end of the movie, he's so disgusted with it that he throws his badge away. Forget this. I'm out of here. Um, so, people of the more liberal persuasion were like, how dare they try to glorify this rogue cop who doesn't care about anybody's rights and is shooting first and ask questions later. They were very politically minded back in the early 70s. Nowadays, it's like you go watch Lethal Weapon and... You know, there's Mel Gibson jumping through windows and shooting into a crowd, and nobody cares. There's no, like, where's your warrant? You know, because <laughs> it's a movie, for God's sakes. It doesn't always have to be some political statement. Clint Eastwood later said, he was like, I wasn't thinking about that stuff at all. I was just trying to make a good movie. Uh, but, of course, you know, it does kind of have this crypto-fascist uh, undertone to it, and Clint Eastwood... Not exactly the most liberal individual in the world. Uh, but if you've seen it, I highly recommend it. Uh, what's kind of interesting is the Scorpio Killer was based upon the real-life Zodiac Killer that was haunting um, San Francisco at that time. And if you see that movie Zodiac, they, they talk about how in the movie, um, like the lead detective chasing the Zodiac Killer, uh, goes to see Dirty Harry. And people are kind of looking at him like, why don't you go handle it like Dirty Harry would kind of thing. And he's just like, because that's not the real world. You can't just kick in doors and do those things when you're a real police officer. Um, watching this movie, there's a lot of scenes where, obviously, he's Dirty Harry. He's pulling on his 44 Magnum and just basically shooting at the bad guys with little regard for innocent people running by. Uh, as you might imagine... 44 Magnum, not exactly recommended for real police work. Um, basically, if you shot somebody with a 44 Magnum, it would probably fly through the person, out the back of them, through the wall behind them, down the street, into the, into the orphanage, and the, uh, the school for the blind, and the church. And a lot of innocent people would be hurt. So they, they, they don't really recommend it. Um, not to mention that when you shoot it, it's so powerful that the kick is so strong. It's hard to, uh, to reacquire the target, is what they say. So, Although that didn't stop. It, this is actually true. The Philippines Police Department actually used scenes from Dirty Harry in a, in a training video that they had. So there you go. Probably what not to do, I hope. Um, they, um, the guy they hired to be the Scorpio Killer, he was on, uh, like on Broadway in some show. And Clint Eastwood was, saw it and was a big fan. And the director liked him. And he brought him in. And he said he hired him because he has such an innocent-looking face. Um, which would kind of fly in the face of being this crazed serial killer. Um, but what's interesting is the actor was a pacifist. So there's a lot of scenes where he's shooting guns and physically assaulting. He's like smacking a kid in the head. And he's like hitting somebody else over here. And you can see, like, the look of discomfort on his face, especially when he's shooting guns and stuff. He's just kind of cringing because this isn't, it's not his cup of tea, let's just say. Um, like I was saying earlier, Dirty Harry greatly influenced um, a lot of the action movies that we see today. Um, a lot of the, uh, the rules about the, uh, the, the loose cannon cop who, you know, the, the chief's yelling at him, got the mayor jumping on my back because you blew up that city bus and you shot through the house. How could you? That, a lot of that stuff comes right from Dirty Harry. Uh, you know, again, he's a loose cannon. He doesn't always play by the rules, but he's effective. And you're kind of pulling for the guy. Um, so he has that going for him. Uh, Clint Eastwood in his crustiest, uh, <laughs> in his crusty best, let me tell you. He's often like delivering his lines like through gritted teeth and squinty eyes. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's Clint Eastwood. Um, <laughs> sadly, 
he did not sing the theme song like he did in Gran Torino. So there you go. Gran Torino. If you haven't seen Gran Torino, that joke would run over your head. Um, anyway, <laughs> if you haven't seen Dirty Harry, like I said, it went on to spawn a bunch of sequels, including Magnum Force, The Enforcer, Sudden Impact, and sadly, The Deadpool. People are constantly coming up to Clint Eastwood to this day, saying, why don't you do another Dirty Harry movie, even though the guy's like 95 years old. I'm not sure what he'd be doing at that stage of the game. Um, if you haven't seen it, Rush Out. It's streaming instantly on Netflix right now. Um, it, it's a little slow at times. There's a lot of exposition where it's just him kind of looking around, like investigating the case. And a lot of musical montages uh, where he's tracking down the killer. On uh, Rotten Tomatoes, they gave it a 95% fresh, so you know it's good. Um, like I said, on Netflix, I actually bought a four-pack of Dirty Harry movies from Target, and I think it was like eight bucks. So, if you want to own it, it's very cheap as well. Um, next week, next week, I'm going to be doing the comedy classic from the early 80s, Airplane. From the guys who brought you the Naked Gun movies and the Hot Shots movies, Top Secret, all those good ones. Um, so send in your questions and comments, favorite scenes, favorite quotes. You can reach me on Twitter, KD9575. I am on Facebook. You can post a question or comment onto uh, my page at YouTube, The B Movie Club, and I'll talk about it on the show. Um, as you know, I end every episode with my favorite quote, out of context. And my buddy Tori posted on Facebook my favorite quote. When I see a naked man chasing a woman into an alley with a butcher knife and a heart on, I don't think he's collecting for the Red Cross. And that's good advice for all of us. There are a few others in there. There's, of course, Do You Feel Lucky, Punk? Uh, and the quasi-racist, I got to know. So I had a wide variety there. Thank you for joining us. Next week, airplane. Send in your questions and comments. And be well. <laughs>